Hey everybody, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be doing a pretty serious upgrade on our DIY solar generator. If you look back uh, down in the description, I'll have a link to the playlist of the initial build on this project. But we're going to do, like I say, a real nice upgrade on this. We have a 100 amp uh, lead time mini battery in the lower module section of this. We're going to upgrade 200 amp hours. Right, we're gonna get rid of some components inside. We're also gonna be doing some testing on this at the end of the video. We're gonna test the capacity of the Lee Time Bluetooth batteries. Uh, they provided these batteries for this upgrade so I could bring you guys an up close look and actually put them into practical use. So let's just go ahead and get right into the project. Let's go ahead and remove the top section. In here, in the bottom section, this is our battery compartment. We already have the battery disconnected just to make this a little bit quicker, but we're gonna remove the old battery and our converter charger. You can see here we have the Lead Time Mini. This is not the Bluetooth version. The new ones are gonna be the Bluetooth version. Let's go ahead and pull this out. So currently we have our converter charger, right? We have it attached to this Lead Time Mini. I have found that I am not even using the converter charger. This thing's charging up the solar all the time. I don't have to use the backup grid to charge this. If I ever do need to charge this, I'll just use a regular lithium battery charger and just connect it up with some clamps. I've never even had to use this, so we're gonna get rid of this. The Lead Time Mini without the Bluetooth and the Lead Time with Bluetooth, they are literally the exact, they're the exact same body on that exact same size. The only difference is this has the Bluetooth capability. So we're gonna get rid of this one. So it'll allow us to remotely monitor each battery individually, right? And we're gonna have two of these and we're gonna hook these in parallel, right? So when we hook these in parallel, voltage stays the same. So it's gonna still be a 12 volt system, right? But the amp hours, the capacity doubles. So we're gonna have 200 amp hours 12 volt system now. Each one of these batteries has a 100 amp maximum continuous discharge. So when you hook these together, you can actually increase the amp capabilities, the amp capacity of these. So you'll be able to handle 200 amps because that amp usage is shared between the two batteries. That's what's nice about hooking uh, in parallel. I always keep my caps on everything until we're ready to install just for safety. Hey, let's get this other battery in. I say this is gonna be a tight fit. We need to slide that over. Kind of do a little snugging up on this. Make sure we're all set. Got everything in. Let's go ahead and just strap this down. Just for safety, it is pretty snug in here, but look how perfect everything fits in this, this box. I see the original build. You can look in the playlist on this. But look at this. We're not going anywhere. I mean, it fits perfect. We're gonna hook these up in parallel. So positive to positive, right? We have a jumper, negative to negative, right? We have our load negative is gonna go on this end and our load positive is on that this end here. So everything is balanced, right? We're pulling through both batteries equally. I like to crisscross that. Not required, but recommended. So let's go ahead and hook these things up. One thing I like about the lead time batteries too, is some lithium batteries, they just have a bolt here. They don't have the Phillips head. With this Phillips head uh, lug on here, it's just so easy to connect and disconnect. Let's go ahead and get this connected. See here how we have this connected. And we can go ahead and connect the other, this is the positive. Right, we don't wanna over torque these. They do have a torque specification on them. I like to torque just down to where the lock washer flattens out and give it a little bit of a twist there. We should be good. Same on this one. We're gonna spin that down till that lock washer flattens out and then give it a little bit of a turn. Now we're gonna hook up the negative side. Everything should be good. All we have to do now is reprogram our little controller here, our battery monitor by lead time, 
uh, reprogram that to 200 amp hours instead of 100 amp Let's hours. Let's go ahead and put our little protective caps on, right? Not gonna hurt anything, a little bit of safety here. Just like that. So I think we're good. Let's go ahead, uh, put a solar panel on it, test this thing out. All right, we have our main circuit breaker right here. We're gonna go ahead and reset this circuit breaker. That way we have power. The lower unit is powered on. We'll go ahead and shut that up. Oh, nice. Perfect. All right, now let's go ahead and set the top module. The top module has our charge controller, has our inverter, has our AC outlets on here, right? So we set it on there, we can lock it into place. Our modules are connected. We have our PV, uh, photovoltaic circuit breaker. It's off. We have our battery circuit breaker. It's off. We have our main power coming in, right? We have a 250 amp circuit breaker here. It's off. Now we can connect the two modules together with our Anderson connection. Perfect. Okay, now it's time to pre-charge our inverter, right? Just hold that down. This is our little pre-charge. You hear that? The inverter turned on. So now our capacitors on our inverter are pre-charged. We don't have to worry about the inrush. And now I can just go ahead, turn the power on to the inverter. Lead time. They send stickers. Who doesn't like stickers? Where do we want to put these things at? On our top module. How about that? Let's go ahead and hook some solar panels up to this. We're going to put a load on it. We're going to monitor this with the Bluetooth app. You can see we'll be able to monitor each battery individually. Always remember on a solar charge controller, battery first and then solar, right? So think about it. At nighttime, uh, the sun goes down. The power from the solar panel goes on and off all the time. You always have to have your battery connected. If you don't have the battery connected and you connect the solar panels, you could damage your solar charge controller. Look here, we have our solar panel outside connected. We have a 200 watt solar panel, a little portable folding solar panel connected to this. We come in, now we're gonna go ahead and turn the charge controller on. First thing we have to do, battery first, right? Always battery first. We're gonna go ahead and turn the battery on. We're powering up. Give that a second to power up completely. All right, we're on battery. Now we can go ahead and turn our solar on. And we're good. Solar power is charging the batteries. The batteries are fully charged right now. Uh, let's go ahead and put a load on this. We're gonna put a load on and then we can monitor the Bluetooth app on both of these batteries and going to demonstrate the uh, application that this comes with. I have three batteries currently attached to this, but I've renamed the two that are in this to DIY generator uh, with a little serial number information on it. I'm going to put this in the right hand screen, just right over my right shoulder. You can see it's going to mirror this image, but you can see here I have my two batteries on my display right here. Both of them are at 100% state of charge. Right, let's go into the one where I'm connected to the Bluetooth. We'll go right into that. And you can stay, see here, right? 100% uh, uh, capacity. We have zero current going in, zero current going out. We're at 13.9 volts, right? If you can see on the left-hand side here, balancing, it says the, the batteries, the cells are balancing right now. So let's go ahead and check that. So when the batteries get fully charged, uh, every few times it goes to 100%, the batteries will balance themselves. So it's automatic balancing. You got to make sure, you know, every month or so you completely charge the battery. That way the cells will balance. So in this battery, we are in balancing mode. Let's go ahead and check out the other battery. We'll hook up the Bluetooth on that one and see where we're at with that. Right, both batteries are both batteries are balancing right now. So if we go ahead and turn this heat gun on, right, we can look at the monitor down here, right? We'll turn that on. We're running uh, negative 61.8 amps on the entire system. Well, if we look on the application as everything kind of levels out, right, we're at 38, right? That load is being shared, 
between the two batteries. So we're at like 35.5 amps, 34 amps uh, current, and it's starting to drop as that load starts to balance out. The BMS is functioning normally. So now we're gonna go ahead and show you the capacity and load test we did on these batteries. Okay, we're starting our capacity test on this. Remember, this is 100 amp hour. We wanna make sure we have 100 amp hours on this. Right, we're running this test at 25 amps. Uh, cutoff voltage, 10.5 volts. And uh, we're counting down amp hours right now. We're at 0.4, and uh, we'll be back when this is done. Okay, we finished up the battery test. The battery actor actually shut off on low voltage protection. We can see here, we came out with 102.57 amp hours. So we passed the capacity test. It did shut off on low uh, voltage protection, which is a good thing. We want it to do that when that voltage drops too low. That BMS will protect that battery. Lithium batteries, if they drop down to zero volts, can really damage them. Might not be able to come back to life. But when the low voltage protection uh, kicks in and shuts off, sometimes it'll reset itself, sometimes it won't. If it doesn't reset itself, don't panic. What you'll need is you can use a, I got a little uh, battery charger here that has a force mode. And that force mode, it's gonna jam voltage in and it's gonna reactivate that BMS, turn that BMS on. If you don't have one of those, you can actually hook another battery uh, in parallel with the battery that had the BMS shut off, that voltage from the battery will kick that BMS back on and then you can go into regular charging. We're charging this thing up now since we drained it all the way down. When it gets done charging, we're gonna do some load tests on it. Okay, we have our load test center all set up. We have our battery switches. We have our 3000 watt lead time inverter. We have a resistive load with our heat gun. We're gonna see if this battery shuts off on overload protection. Our inverter's on, we're ready to start pulling some amps. And if we come in close here, we can see our meter, right? We're pulling 1.72 amps. Let's go ahead and turn this on low. Right, we're pulling 64 amps, turn it on high. We're pulling 124 amps on that. All right, so our BMS has the safety protection and that's exactly what we were looking for to make sure that that BMS shuts off if you run it over 100 amps for a short period of time. That's what I like about lead time. Their programming parameters in their BMSs are always right on the money and that's what we're looking for. This battery also has the low temperature charge protection. That way you don't have to worry about damaging this in cold weather. So I hope you enjoyed the upgrade, the project. Make sure you subscribe. I'm trying to reach 10,000 subscribers and links for all the pieces and parts and the upgrade in the description down below. So from Stonebroke Adventure, until next time.